bodies of two Detroit police officers tragically discovered inside a Livonia home. Here's to be domestic. Uh, it looks like uh, preliminarily. Uh, and uh, that's where we are. Police officers are regular people and they have problems and they have, you know, they need help like, like anyone else. Uh, and this, this situation highlights. On February 19th, 2023, a welfare check into the home of two Livonia Police Department officers, 22-year-old Officer Maria Martin and 26-year-old Matthew Ethington II, would lead police officers to discover their bodies laying on the ground both suffering from fatal wounds. An investigation into their murder would unveil a story of obsession, secrets, and betrayal. What truly happened between Maria and Matthew that led to the events of February 19th? And how did it affect the community of Livonia? Let's explore that in the story of the cop who brutally his ex-lover after refusing to break up. Dr. Ken Wolf, an expert in incident management, says when someone wants out of a relationship, it becomes a crisis point which creates risk for the person trying to leave. At about 12 cars p.m. on February 19, 2023, a police officer with the Livonia Police Department had just received an alarm call to a home in Livonia. When he got there, it turned out the incident was not really serious and he quickly de-escalated it. On his way back to the station, less than 20 minutes later, the officer saw a woman out of the corner of his eye standing by her car. She appeared very frantic and disturbed. Before he knew it, the woman started waving at him enthusiastically, trying to get him to pull over. He assessed the situation and figured out the woman was probably having trouble getting her car to start or maybe needed his help in some other way. So he pulled over and asked her what was wrong. That woman identified herself to the officer as Officer Maria Martin's mother, and amidst a great deal of panic, proceeded to tell him of the events that occurred before she flagged him down. She told the officer that at around 6.30 to 7 a.m., that morning she had received a call from her daughter. The call had initially started out as a regular conversation between her and her daughter. She was checking up on Maria as she had not spoken to her in a few days, but as their conversation deepened, she noticed that another person had entered the room. She assumed that was her daughter's boyfriend, fellow officer, Matthew Athington. Officer Martin's mom continued to talk to her daughter when she noticed Matthew's voice had started to get a bit harsh. She could not make out what he was saying very clearly, but she knew that he sounded like he was angry with Maria. Before she realized it, a full-on argument had broken out between Maria and Matthew. Things were getting a bit tense from the side of the conversation she could hear. She started to try to calm Maria down a bit, but it was not working. And before she knew it, the phone call ended abruptly. Once the phone call ended, Maria's mom decided to give it a bit of time before she reached back out to see if they were doing okay. She gave it a few minutes to an hour after, which she called her daughter back. But there was one problem. Maria was not answering her phone calls. At first, she felt she hadn't given them enough time and they were still hashing things out, so she gave them some more time. A few minutes later, she called again and there was still no answer. At this point, she had started to fear that something had gone horribly wrong. She continued to try Maria's number without success. As the morning time slowly passed, she knew she had to do something. Neither Maria nor Matthew were answering their phones, and she could not shake the feeling that they weren't just busy arguing. She was more worried because Maria and Matthew had a one-year-old who lived with them at home. Maria also had another child, but he was currently away from home, spending time with family members. It's a big deal when someone can't be reached, especially when they have a little kid with them. Maria's mom became really worried about what might have happened in that Livonia townhouse and hoped desperately that they were all okay. Imagine being in a situation where someone you know might be in trouble and you're trying to help, but you can't reach them. It must have been very stressful for Maria's mom who was trying to reach through to her daughter and her family all morning. Maria's mom then decided to go out and get some help to find her daughter. It was while she was on the road, figuring out what to do, that she saw a police car coming towards her. 
and she decided to flag it down. She told the officer she would like him to do a welfare check on Maria Martins. The officer agreed, and then headed to Maria and Matthew's house. The officer arrived at the Bell Creek Square townhome in the 16,000 block of Farmington Road at approximately 12.30 p.m. Upon getting there, they knocked on the front door several times with no response. The house was very quiet, and there was no sign anyone was home. Since there was no one to answer the door, they had no way of gaining entry into the property. The officer told Maria's mom, it's possible the couple had already left for work, but Maria's mom insisted it was not possible because her daughter had told her that they were off that day. She also stuck with her gut feeling that something was wrong. Her daughter always answered her calls and she had never gone this long without returning a call. But then, there was still an issue of getting into the property to check on the couple. As they were pondering on what to do, Maria's mom remembered that she knew where the garage door opener was kept. She proceeded to retrieve it and give it to the officer so he could gain entry to the residence. But upon gaining entry, the sight that greeted the officer would chill him to his bonus. Bodies of two Detroit police officers tragically discovered inside a Livonia home. According to the LPD report, the officer on the scene gained entry to the garage, and thankfully, the door that led into the house from the garage was not locked. As he entered the main residence, he encountered a flight of stairs curved up and around into the living room. As he got to the living room, he immediately saw the deceased body of Matthew Ethington at the top of the stairs in the room's southeast corner. Matthew appeared to have suffered a fatal shot to the head. The officer also found a firearm near Matthew's feet, and there were empty cases all around the living room. It was clear something horrific had gone down in that living room. As he progressed farther into the house, still looking for Maria, he instead found Maria's body laying in the northwest corner of the home, beside a couch. It appeared that she had been fired at repeatedly. The officer wasn't done looking for people, he had been told Maria and Matthew had a one-year-old who was at home with them, and even though he had found Maria and Matthew, he could not locate the one-year-old anywhere in the living room. As he proceeded further into the house, in an attempt to seek out the baby, he heard soft crying coming from a different area of the home. He followed the sound to find a one-year-old boy wandering around the master bedroom. At first glance, the little boy, though confused and tired, did not seem injured. He was found walking around the foot of the bed in a heavily soiled diaper. He likely woke up and could not find his parents anywhere. He was hungry, confused, and in need of a bath. The officer quickly called in emergency services while he picked up the child and took him outside the residence, handing him to his grandmother. The officer then proceeded to wait outside the house for emergency services and other officers to arrive on the scene. He knew the couple were probably gone, but it was protocol to call emergency services in cases like that. As the emergency services arrived, they worked on Maria and Martin for a while, before declaring them dead. The officers then swooped in and started their investigation of the crime scene. From what they could see, they already had an idea of what had happened at that home. The officers on the scene quickly noted that Officer Matthew Ethington had suffered only a single shot. While Maria Martin appeared to have been fired at several times, the officers on the scene concluded that there was no outside involvement in the case. It appeared to be domestic in nature. But it appears to be domestic. Uh, uh, it looks like, uh, preliminarily, uh, our suicide and uh, that's where we are. In a press conference, the chief of police for Livonia called the incident a senseless tragedy, saying it marked a sad day for our department. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family as well as our officers, who are taking it pretty hard, the chief added. The fact that this happened to two police officers shook the town of Livonia, making the authorities determined to unearth the full story. Although the authorities were sure what it was, they still didn't know what led to the tragic incident between Maria and Martin and who the aggressor was. 
But an investigation into Maria and Matthew's life would reveal way more than anyone bargained for, unearthing a story of control, betrayal, and the true darkness human beings are capable of. Maria Martins had always wanted to be an officer for as long as she could remember. She always felt a fierce desire to protect those who could not protect themselves. So joining the force at the young age of 18 was a no-brainer for her. She already knew she wanted to join straight out of high school and wasted no time, making her dreams come true. Maria's mom described Maria as a bundle of joy ever since she was little. She was a happy-go-lucky child who knew early on that the world was not always a safe place and everyone needed to do their best to keep the peace. Maria was described by her neighbors as a good person. She tended to mind her business and never caused any trouble. Maria met Matthew Ethington when she joined the force, pretty quickly after she joined. Matthew was still married when he and Maria met, but their chemistry was instant and Matthew had known his marriage was not working for a while before he met Maria. Meeting Maria just pushed him to do what he needed to do. Matthew and his wife began the process of divorce. Around the same time, Matthew began seeing Maria. It wasn't serious at first. Maria knew Matthew was in the process of getting a divorce, and she didn't want to get into anything serious with him just in case he changed his mind about divorcing his wife. But she could not deny that she was smitten with him. Against Maria's better judgment, her relationship with Matthew moved pretty quickly. And before anyone knew it, Maria got pregnant with their first child. The couple then moved in together to start their new life as a family of three. At this point, Matthew was still in the process of getting a divorce, and it wasn't going as easy as he had thought it would go. The stress of his divorce coupled with the birth of their first child, a boy, created some tension in their relationship. They started to have little arguments that would take a long time to get resolved. Those little arguments soon graduated to big arguments, and before Maria knew it, they were having big fights. Matthew started to develop control issues. It could be because his divorce was putting a big strain on his life that he sought to control what he could, which was Maria. Or it could be something else. But whatever it was, Maria certainly never saw it coming. Maria's family, her sister and her mom never knew what was happening to Maria at home. She kept that part of her relationship to herself. It's unclear at this point whether she sought outside help to help her deal with it. But what is known is that Maria was soon pregnant with her second child, another boy. Around the time Maria gave birth to their son, Matthew finalized his divorce. At this point, it would seem like the couple no longer had any obstacles in their path. There should be no reason why they should not be happy and focused on building their small family. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. In fact, it would only get worse. Police have not confirmed what led up to the shooting death of Maria Martin at her Livonia condo Sunday. However, they say Matthew Ethington II shot her multiple times, killing her, before turning the gun on himself. The investigators went back to the crime scene to find more clues. They looked carefully at everything to understand what happened. They were trying to figure out how it all happened and who else might have been involved. They wanted to solve the puzzle and find out the truth about what had taken place. The investigators worked hard to gather all the information they could to piece together the full story. They were thorough in their investigation examining every detail to uncover the hidden details behind this tragic event. The investigation into the horrific incident that happened to Matthew and Maria revealed a lot of shocking information. Matthew and Maria had worked with the Livonia Police Department for around five years, so their colleagues thought they knew them to an extent. But they were about to discover how wrong they were. For one, although they put on a good front for everyone around them, Matthew and Maria's relationship was crumbling. It had gotten to the point that Maria wanted out. The investigators discovered that Maria had broken up with Matthew before the events of that fateful day, or at least had she tried to. The investigators had also discovered that Matthew and Maria had had some domestic issues in the past, but nothing that could have explained the tragic incident of February 19th. Maria had also never filed an official report about it, 
and had only confided in a few people about her issues at home with Matthew. He had become temperamental, controlling, and manipulative. He never wanted her to leave the house without him, and on days she absolutely had to. She was faced with millions of questions from the moment she got home. From what the investigators know so far, it was not hard to put together the pieces of what had happened on that day in that living room. Maria had tried to break up with Matthew again, and Matthew was not having it. He likely saw Maria leaving him as a loss of control, which triggered him to want to take back control. In those kinds of situations, he might have felt very possessive of Maria and felt if he couldn't have her, no one could. He likely also never thought far ahead, never thought of their children and how he would be leaving them with no parents. It was likely an impulsive decision on his part. At this point in the investigation, the authorities had landed on who the aggressor was. Their relationship history, as well as the fact that Maria was fired at several times, while Matthew's fatal wound looked self-inflicted, meant that he likely fired at Maria before turning the weapon on himself. This has happened, I've discarded every document that we have involving the officers, and uh, nothing, nothing jumps out at you at all. Uh, model officers, no, no issues. This case was one that rocked the police department in Livonia, and it was one they struggled to understand. Matthew had not had any history of violence with the force. He had been a good officer, who discharged his duties with utmost care and respect for the people he was meant to protect. He had never given his superiors any reason to worry about him during his five years with the force, so his horrific actions came out of nowhere. In a press statement, the chief of police talked about the tragedy saying it was a perfect opportunity to learn from what had happened and figure out a way to prevent it from happening again. Senseless tragedy. We're going to find out exactly what happened as the investigation unfolds. Learn from it. Use what we learned to help some of our officers heal from this, as well as prevent a tragedy like this going forward. We just don't know what led to this. The situation was pretty traumatic for the officers who had worked with Matthew and Maria. Many of their colleagues who worked on the case also worked closely with the couple. The force provided counseling for its officers who knew the couple personally and were devastated by the incident. We'll have our chaplains here, our peer support team here, but none of that can take some of the heartbreak away from what our officers are dealing with. From this case, the community learned that members of law enforcement are people too. It's easy to think of them as heroes who save our lives and properties every day and put themselves in the line of danger to keep other people safe. But like everyone else, they're faced with the same issues, and because of the way they're seen in society, they find it difficult to seek help when they need it. These officers are regular people and they have problems and they have, you know, they need help like, like anyone else, uh, and this, this situation highlights. The community could not help but feel a great deal of pity for the young children who were left behind, with the chief of police highlighting that they needed to be explained to, in detail, what had happened to their parents. All the children are going to have uh, some emotional recovery that they have to deal with. Um, but, you know, here they are without a mom and dad, and, and someone's got to explain to them. The death of Maria and Matthew, especially by Matthew's hands, took their neighbors by surprise. Maria and Matthew had been good neighbors, never causing any disturbance, and always looked happy together. No one saw this coming. I spoke with a neighbor of Maria Martin and Matthew Ethington II. That neighbor did not want to go on camera. However, he describes them as good people, two people who served on the force here at DPD, and he did not see this coming. While Maria's family has been mostly silent on the tragedy, her sister created a GoFundMe page to help her family in the wake of their loss, and that page has raised more than $4,400 so far. In the caption for the page, Maria's sister wrote a heartfelt message to Maria, expressing her disappointment that her sister did not confide in her about her struggles. She also expressed some anger at the man who took her sister from her. Today I lost my sister on February 19, 2023, due to domestic violence. She never spoke on it to nobody. She stayed quiet, bro. Sis, you could have told me, bro. I love you. I would have helped. Stop letting these men belittle or break y'all. To the man that killed my sister. Bro, you're a coward. How could you? You broke me. You took my sister away from me. 
I lost my sister. I will never be the same. I'm hurting. I will never see my sister again. I passed my driver's test yesterday. My sister was so happy for me now she has gone. Worst pain in the world, bro. I can never call you. She left two kids behind. I don't know how to tell my nephews you're gone. I love you, Maria Martin. I will never stop till we meet again, big sis. We'll make you proud you didn't even get to see me walk across the stage. I'm doing this for you. Lil sis will make you proud. I love you. Maria Martin, so much I will never stop loving you. I will make sure your kids know their mom was a superhero. I love you. I will never forget you. You taught me so many things. Get your rest, big sis. It's gonna haunt me every day. I never saw the signs. This is not goodbye. It's see you later. Members of the Livonia community have also been supportive of the family during these tragedies, with a lot of them expressing a desire to help police officers, just like they help us. One person left a comment that said, Cops are people too, but they are held to a higher standard, because when we are in trouble, they are our first line of defense. We call them first. It is so sad that a police officer did not find a way to seek the help he obviously needed, so that he could defuse a situation that caused him to end two lives. I pray that their families will find peace in dealing with this tragedy, and that the baby in the house will never remember what he or she witnessed. Two children are now orphans. Hey, thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in the comments and before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time and stay safe.